Hi everybody, this is Wheeler here, and I'm gonna show you today how to do some pendulum painting. Um, we did this for our recent STEM Fest, and it was a big hit, but it took a lot of trial and error, so hopefully I'm gonna be able to take away all that trial and error for you and make it a lot easier for you to do. Um, so we started out with just a simple something to hang our pendulum on, which we just used a yardstick resting on two chairs, as you can see here, we taped those down so that they're not gonna move. Um, and then we tied a paper clip onto a, a loop of string. That kind of allows you to take the paint distributor off and on easily, so I would highly suggest that. It also helped it to move a little bit more freely. Um, and then what we have created here to distribute the paint um, is basically just a, an old craft paint bottle, just the small little craft paint bottles that you can buy for like 99 cents. Um, we cut the bottom off of that, put punched three holes in it, and attached string, which we attached then onto this metal little ring. And this metal ring was really the only thing I purchased for this, which was a jewelry supply. Um, but once again, that kind of helps it to be able to move. Um, this is another great thing that I discovered doing this is that the, the tip for a glue bottle will fit perfectly onto um, a craft paint uh, uh, bottle. And this made a perfect way to get that nice line that we wanted for our pendulum painting. So that screws on there perfectly. Um, and then I did, however, snip the little um, orange stopper inside the glue bottle off so that the paint would flow a little bit more freely. Um, the most challenging thing about doing this is getting the right consistency of paint because you want the paint to flow, but you don't want it to be too watery. Um, otherwise, it will go everywhere. What you want is to have, got a little paint here so you can see, a nice thin layer of paint like that, okay? Um, you want it to be you know, pretty even and come out in a nice line. Um, and the more paint you put in there, the more uh, the line is gonna be nice and even. So you don't wanna skimp on the paint. Um, you also need a couple of little cups to catch the paint because it will keep flowing out um, as, you know, there's no way to stop it once you put the paint in there, which is why these are kind of a nice size because you can't put too much paint in there, uh, especially if you're working with kids who want to put a lot of paint in. There's, it's not going to hold that much paint, so you're not going to waste too much. The other thing about having the cups is nice is you can pour those back into the paint bottle and, um, and recycle it. So we are just using basic Blick Tempera paint um, that I've added a little bit of water to. Um, I wish there was some you know, formula that I could give you that make it perfect, but you really, it's just kind of trial and error uh, to, to get the right consistency of paint. Um, but we've also used acrylic paint that worked really well as well with just a little bit of water added to it. So play around with that a little bit and see how it works. So basically you're gonna take your little cup, little paint bottle here um, fill it about, I'd say, halfway with paint, okay? And then you don't have to give it a hard push. You just want to make it kind of go in a circle, okay? And you will see how it changes. Look how neat that is. Um, kind of making different designs as it goes. And you can really let it go for a long time. And depending on the string, how much paint is in there, um, you will really get some interesting designs. When it gets to a point where you feel like you're done, you just get your cup, grab it, and put it back in there. And then it's really easy to switch out for another piece of paper. So let's try a different one this time. Um, again, these cups are really important, so you don't want to start without having one of those. Yeah, I'm going to try to do it this way. Oh, watch out. So you want to you got to make sure you have enough paper to cover your area, but that looks really good. Ooh, look how pretty that is. And when these dry, you could even do another one on top of it with a different color, um, get some different variations. Um, you can, if you use acrylic paint, you can take watercolor and paint inside of them um, and get some really neat designs with that. Uh, the higher you make this, the bigger you can work. Um, so if you wanted to work really large and have a, you know, a long pendulum, um, that's a total possibility. Um, if you're using tempera paint, you can also take chalk pastel 
and kind of add color and work back into those. So you can kind of see um, this design. I don't want to hold it up too high because it'll drip. You could come back in with some chalk pastel and add colors in there. Um, you could talk about planets uh, and their orbit. Uh, if you have a great math teacher, you could um, chart kind of some of the, of the paths of these. Um, there's also a lot of physics involved in this. So if you wanted to add in some STEM activities um, with physics, this would be a great project for that. Um, or you can just do it because it's fun and uh, makes a really cool design. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll have a great activity for you next time. Bye.